Welcome back, sports fans. I'm John Foster of WVSportsNet.com, alongside second-year head coach Nick Cabell of the Scott Skyhawks. Coach, thanks for allowing us in your program. I see that you've uh, got a new locker room and stuff here for the kids. Let's, let's start out. Let's talk about that a little bit because this has primarily not been a basketball school for a long time, and what has happened here in the past three or four years, probably five years actually, has really turned the corner. You want to talk a little bit about your new, new locker room? Yeah, the past five years that uh, we've been coaching here, we've tried to change the mindset, I guess you could say, of the basketball program, the way people view it and the way we play. Right. Uh, we've tried to become a tougher team, uh, work hard, you know, do things like that. And we wanted to build this locker room to show our appreciation to the kids for doing all that. Right. You know, if you give them something for working hard, they're going to continue to work hard. And um, we're hoping by, by getting them something nice that uh, – you know, show our appreciation. They'll continue to work as hard as they have. Absolutely. In a time where kids are not used to working very hard to obtain things, you know, outside of, of athletics, that's probably a really good thing you're passing on to your kids. I've known you for a long time, Coach. You've always told me whatever's in the past is in the past. Uh, this is the preseason show, so I want to kind of wrap up last year a little bit before we move on to the new 2012-2013 season. You talked about being tough. We're, we're two years removed going in this year from losing a state championship game against Oak Hill. You have a couple kids that were on that team in Matt Dolan and Cody Brown that have came back. Matt's going to be a senior and Cody's going to be a junior. If you had to, to wrap up, uh, you know, in maybe two or three sentences or just a short statement to the, to your fans, to your community on what you learned last year, what would that be? Uh, last year we faced a lot of adversity. Um, it seemed like our backs were always against the wall. We started out hot, you know, two and zero, oh, and then everything started going downhill from there. Um, we became a lot stronger because of it. You know, anytime you're getting beat, you've got to get tougher right. and start playing more together, or you're going to continue to get beat. And I think the progress we saw from the beginning of the year to the end of the year in our sectional game against Mingo Central really said a lot about our team. We were starting. A couple freshmen, sophomores with a lone junior and a lone senior. And we only lost by five points to a team that handed it to us in a scrimmage game right. at the beginning of the year. So, you know, just to make those steps and get better that way, it said a lot about our guys. Um, and I, I just got to commend them for that. Absolutely. Well, you, you mentioned it a little bit there of the youth of your team. You were really heavy sophomore freshman mix and you're trying to put them in there um adversity was a good word to use there because those kids um probably had won quite a few games from grade school through middle school uh, they were a pretty good group when they were together and a lot of kids don't know how to react once they start losing but you, you've, you've taken that and you've built and something we were talking about off camera was that you played almost 50 games this summer and I'm taking it that most of those kids that went through the season last year was able to go through this summer program. And basketball is a lot like anything in life. As long as you continue to play and you know you keep yourself in shape, wherever you're going to become better. Kind of tell us a little bit about what happened this summer over the 49 games. Well, you said it earlier. Um, kids don't work for very much anymore, and it seems like uh, it's not like when we were younger when they go outside and play every day for school either. Um, you've got to have a gym open somewhere or do something um, like summer league games to keep them playing through the off season. So we tried to schedule as many summer league games as we could. And we've got that three-week period in June. Um, we took them to camps in Tennessee, Kentucky, uh, West Virginia. And we played right at 49 games this summer, which is about equal to two full seasons, you know, of 20, 22 games each. But two full seasons that they couldn't have got otherwise. Right. Um, I started to see our sophomores playing like juniors, and I started to see our juniors playing like seniors. And um, with the big group we have at sophomores and juniors, that's going to be a good thing come this year. I mean, they got 50, 49 games under their belt that they wouldn't have got otherwise had we not had that three-week period. So you've actually almost, as far as, like you said, games-wise, you've advanced these kids beyond, uh, I mean, by the time they're seniors, you know, if you keep this up, I mean, <laughs> I know it's kind of, it sounds crazy, but they might be six-year seniors as far as games being played. And um, that, that's good. That, that breeds cohesion within, you know, your unit. And hopefully they'll be able to translate those summer league games of success onto this year. 
Um, talking a little bit about the players, we mentioned it earlier. We have one returning senior in Matt Dolan. He was uh, he was present during the state championship run, played quite a bit. Um, for at that time, it was uh, Jason Kingery was the head coach, and you you were on the you were on the assistant staff. Let's talk a little bit about his game and Cody Brown, the juniors' game. Have they been able to connect any to these younger kids, Coach? And and maybe not necessarily show them the way, but uh, are they able to convey what it means to make a state title run? Yeah, Matt Matt played a big role in our uh, state championship run. He was just a sophomore, but he started, uh, played a lot of minutes, hit a couple of real big shots in the uh, semifinals game against Polka. And uh, even the first game against Point Pleasant, he hit some big shots. And I think because of that, Last year, which he was just a junior, but led the conference in scoring. You know, it just the, I guess the uh, confidence he had just carried over to the following year, and he's he's been a great asset to our team. He's he's another coach on the floor. And I know some coaches say that a lot, but he really is. Any time something's out of whack or, or he notices that kids aren't doing what they're supposed to do, I know I mentioned this beginning of the year last year, but he, he picks them up and tells them what they need to do. Not necessarily jumps on them, but just tells them, right. come on, pick it up, you know, make your box out, do what you got to do. Um, Cody, he didn't play as much in the uh, state championship run, but he did see spot minutes here and there because he was just a freshman. But uh, Cody's got that uh, swagger about him, I guess you could say, where it's just he's naturally a leader, naturally uh, takes the, the role and doesn't necessarily lead by his mouth, but by his actions. Right. You know, he always goes hard. He'll be the first to dive on the floor. Cody hates to lose, yeah. and I think that's one of his biggest assets. Right. Well, you used talking a little bit about him. You and I both work in the school system, and not being that far removed from school, it's it's easy to see these kids in groups, and you can you can see that kind of magnetic uh, field that they have. You know, people are drawn to people, and that's all through life. You know, if like you said, he's kind of like a natural-born leader, and that's always a good thing to have on the team. I want to go back a little bit to Matt's demeanor. Um, Coach, I've not seen too many players at his age with the success he's had keep so calm and cool. And, I mean, we're talking about a kid that is probably towards the top of his class. He was uh, actually inducted the first class into the uh, Boone County Honors Academy. Mm -hmm. And to such a select, to, to kind of give you the, what that is, it was a select few. I think it was under 20 kids uh, that were junior and seniors last year. Uh, I think they had over six, seven hundred applicants, and they picked, you know, like 15 or 17. And Matt was accepted. So not only on the floor is he smart, but off the floor is exceptionally smart. Um, let's talk a little bit about the sophomores that you got coming back. Um, now we saw these kids two years ago um, in. No, I'm, I'm, no, we saw them last year in the uh, Coalfield Shootout. Um, in Anthony Sigmund and is it Alex Abels, right? Your other big man. He's a he's a junior. Be a so it's junior. a junior sophomore mix that yes. uh, saw a lot of time for you last year. Let's talk about their maturation, coach. Um, you know, going from you know being the lowest man on the totem pole to you know now being being in the game almost. You know, um, Anthony and Alex both they came in uh, rather weak to mm -hmm. say, which all freshmen do. Right. Uh, some come in a little stronger than others, but when you play down low. You take a lot more of a beating being weak than you do a guard up top. So, uh, they both came in a little weak and it took them a while to get it. Yeah. You know, to understand what it means to be strong, to play with your body, to use any advantage you can use to try to get a position on your defender. And throughout the course of the season, they did better at that. Right. They started using their body better and they started doing everything that they needed to do. And um, by the end of the season, they were starting to produce. Right. Uh, beginning of the year, we saw very few points, um, rebounds here and there. Yeah. But uh, by the end of the season, they were starting to produce points. You know, seeing six to eight to ten points is big right. out of a freshman or a sophomore. Absolutely. And um, I think if, well, I know as long as they continue to work, out of already what I've saw this summer and this fall, um, they should be producing 10, 12, 14 right. with Ten rebounds. Absolutely, and that's part of the maturation process. You said, you know, that you kind of amplified this summer, getting them in a gym somewhere and playing. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> to to quote your predecessor, when we played for head coach Jason Kinger, he always told us, he said, you can either work hard or you can go lay by the pool. Mm -hmm. And a lot of kids will take that pool route, but uh, you know, get in the gym. You know, seeing some gym rats. So hopefully, I think that'll pay off for you this year. 
We'll move on, Coach. We'll, we'll talk a little bit about the, the upcoming season. Um, at the beginning of every year, you, the, well, the past three or four years anyway, you've had the Coalfield Classic at the Madison Civic Center. Great event. Um, gets teams from all around, not only our area, but from out of state coming in. Um, kind of want to talk a little bit real quick about the schedule. Talk about some of the teams you got coming in. And uh, from there, we'll go and we'll, we'll talk about the matchups individually. Um, this year, you're going to, uh, again, you're going to have games Friday night mm -hmm. and then carrying on into Saturday. Uh, Friday night, right out of the gate, we see Tulsa, which was explosive last year. Absolutely. Absolutely. They led the Cardinal Conference. I think they were 12-3 and three overall in the conference. Had a really, really good team. Semifinal run. They made it to the semifinals yeah, absolutely. as Absolutely. Well. Yeah. Um, Led by Jacob Copley, correct? Yes. Kib was a great, great athlete. Gave a lot of teams matchup trouble. So we'll see how well they come back this year after losing one of their big stars. They'll start off the Coalfield shootout at 6 p.m. versus Wesley Christian out of Kentucky. And after that, Coach, it's really interesting. I want to kind of touch on this. At the 8 o'clock game, it's going to be Scott versus Sherman, and it's the Buddy League night. Great thing that you always do. You know, you, any kid that is involved in an area buddy league, they get in for free, right? Yep. All they have to do is wear their jersey and they get in for free. Absolutely. So uh, that's a great thing because the buddy leaguers can't drive, so they're going to make their parents come. Hopefully it will be a packed house. And it's an in-county rivalry. Yep. Um, the Scott Sherman rivalry has kind of died over the years due to the, uh, I guess, the evolution of 119. Um, they've been back and forth between single A and double A. That's, that's another contributing factor. But I, I look for that to be a pretty, uh, pretty exciting, pretty exciting game. I think it'll be packed, and uh, I think I, <laughs> I have to mention it's going to be kind of not necessarily personal for you, but you, uh, you do teach at Sherman High School, <laughs> yeah. coaching for the Scott Skyhawks. <laughs> That'll be real interesting to see what kind of bragging rights you get there. Yeah, I, I think if we don't come out of that one with a victory, I will hear about it the following Monday at school. Absolutely, I think they'll be all over you. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They'll be led. Um, Duncan, their head coach, he's a great guy. Okay. Uh, so hopefully you know you guys will have your team ready and we'll see some great basketball right out of the gate. Um, and this is to open up the regular season. You have a couple games before that, we right? Play, yeah, we open up on December 4th with Lincoln County, and then we have Tulsa right. uh, that Friday. And I believe, you correct me if I'm wrong, but Sissonville on the following Tuesday, and then it's the Coalfield shootout. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you play three games before then. Uh, three regular season games, you have two scrimmages as well in late November. You were right with that, though. Last year it was the weekend before, but because of the state cheerleading competition, yeah. we moved that back a weekend. That way our cheerleaders could attend both, and oh, absolutely. our fans could go support our cheerleaders right. as well. That's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, we want to want to get everybody behind all yeah. Uh, Skyhawk Athletics and anything that they do. Now Saturday is when the uh, when the games really kick off. It's going to be all day, bell to bell. They'll start at 11 a.m. Um, the Sherman Tysters, after playing that late game, will turn around. They'll get up and play yet another in-county team, Van. And I really like what you've done here, Coach. You've brought the county down. Uh, the three major high schools are all going to play in the Civic Center. It's a neutral location. Uh, I think that'll be great exposure for the county. Um, and that's uh, that's a that's a good single A game. Um, I don't. I haven't looked at the realign, realignment of sectionals, but I would think that those two are in the section against each other, right? Yeah, they are in the section. Um, I tried to get some schools uh, from the coal fields, you know, to represent the coal field shootout, as well as bring other schools from other states. I think we've got schools from four different states going to participate in it. So Absolutely, and that's, that's an awesome thing. That's really, it's really good. Yeah, and it brings uh, not only a lot of people in to watch basketball, but you kind of. You know, boosting the revenue in the area. I mean, they're going to have to go out and eat. They're probably going to spend money on gas and everything. So this is this is just a great event. Um, the following game at 1 p.m., Riverview will take on Buffalo, and at 3 p.m., Belfry, Kentucky, another 119 foe. They're just a little ways. Uh, they're about an hour from here south. They'll play Berwick, Pennsylvania. And uh, for those that don't know, Berwick, PA, is where. Former head coach Jason King, Jason Kingery left and went and coached, so that'll be real good uh, seeing him back. Absolutely. You know, hopefully, uh, that'll be a good game there with Belfry. Between those two coaches, we'll see which one can scream the most. Absolutely, Randy Casey and <laughs> Jason Kingery. They look. He's a hot head as well. <laughs> not only do they look a lot alike, but they coach a lot alike too. That's so, true. Um, Belfry, known as a big football school, mm -hmm. and from what I understand, Berwick. Pennsylvania was the same way Absolutely. when uh, when Jason got there. So we'll get to see him not on the gridiron but on the basketball court. 
Um, that's one of your out of state teams along with Wesley Christian. We get to see another one start at five o'clock, Wyoming East. Always a good uh, double A school, oh, almost yeah. in all athletics. We'll play Tuscarora Central Catholic. Okay, and that's out of Ohio. I was going to let you yeah. say that, so well, I didn't butcher that too bad. Um, then at 7 p.m., Tulsa will return. They'll play another game on the Madison Civic Center floor. They will play Flora McDonald Academy out of North Carolina. And uh, like you said, Coach, you're reaching to you're reaching quite a ways, bringing people mm-hmm. in. And uh, I think I think that'll be a good game as well. We'll once again we'll see how Tulsa stacks up without Jacob Copley in the lineup. And then the nightcap, Coach, it'll be Scott versus Mingo Central, and um, this is a sectional rematch. Oh yeah. From last year, um, you guys were unfortunately on the losing end, 60 to 55. You alluded to it a little bit earlier. You feel like your team's a little bit older, a little bit stronger. Um, hopefully, they'll be able to take that loss and. You know, turned into positive energy this year, and you get your shot early in That's the season. Right. And we're going to look forward to that game. Uh, Mingo Central has a great guard in Austin Banks, uh, maybe one of the best point guards in the state. Yeah. But um, I really thank our guys after last year's loss and them seeing how far they came throughout the season. Are really looking forward to that game, not more than any, but one definitely on the schedule that they're. Uh, Go and try to revenge, yeah. you know, get that get that win and show that we deserve to be one of the top teams again and that we can compete for a sectional title. Absolutely, and, and Mingo Central will be changing uh, changing coaches. Be uh, Brad, I can't think of his Napper. name. Napper. From, uh, he's formerly from the Logan Wildcats staff. He has uh, replaced Dwayne Estep at Mingo Central, so it will be real interesting to see how he brings that program along. Um, Austin Banks, like Coach Cabell uh, referred to, great player to watch, gets up and down the floor really mm-hmm. quick, can handle it, you know, either hand, shoot either hand. Um, it would be real interesting because he's an athlete. Oh, absolutely. It should be a fun game. Absolutely. And that's that pretty much concludes the Coalfield shootout. Um, if, if, you, if you get a chance, you come out. The dates are... December 14th and December 15th, right, Coach? Yes. And I'm under the understanding uh, the 14th is Buddy League night when you play Sherman. That game, again, starts at 8 o'clock. Any youth that will wear their Buddy League basketball jersey will get into the game for free. Um, Also, if you get a chance Saturday, um, come out and watch a full slate of games. Six games all day, Coach, so great, great thing you're doing there with the basketball. Now, let's talk about the league. You're in the Cardinal Conference. Um, it's, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a really, really good double-A basketball conference. Two years ago when you went on your state title run, I'm pretty sure they put three teams into the state finals, right? It was mm-hmm. uh, you guys, Polka, and Point Pleasant. Yes. Okay. All right, now, I alluded to it a little bit earlier. Tulsa led the Cardinal Conference last year with uh, – they were 12 wins. They went 12 and 3. Chapmanville, the uh, always the the foe here at Scott High School, as long as at least we've been involved. Uh, they finished second at 10 and 4. Sissonville went 10 and 5. Polka 8 and 8. So you see four good teams there that played above 500 basketball in the conference. Um, what what type of I guess. What, what does that do to your schedule, Coach, when you're in a conference and you know you're going to get these games every year? Um, just, just explain that a little bit to us. Uh, it's probably a lot like uh, you would hear Bob Huggins talk about last year being in the Big East. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's, it's a struggle night in, night out to play in the conference. But when it all comes down to it, the great thing about basketball is everybody starts 0-0 zero zero in sectional play. So you play that competition all year long. You get to your section. Um, Unfortunately, this year, everybody in our section is in the Cardinal Conference, so it doesn't get any easier. But once we get out of that section, um, you know, you don't see as, as, as I'm not going to say, as good competition, but you're used to the competition, right. and, and you're ready to play with it, and you're ready to, to compete at that level. And I think playing that kind of competition day in and day out only makes you better and stronger as a team. Become battle-tested. You know, you're going to play these teams every and, and a lot of people... Uh, they look at your schedule, like you said, in basketball it's a great thing. They resets in the section, uh, but they look at your overall record, and you know that you think, well, they didn't do really that well. But you know, if you go out and you play cupcakes, you know, night in, night out, most of those teams get bounced out of the uh, the state tournament pretty quickly. You know, whether in the section, if they're lucky enough to make it through the section, the way that these, I guess they're calling them super sections now, are set up. Um, 
the, the, I mean, it, they don't last long, I guess right. is where I'm going with. Yeah. You want to play quality competition night in, night out. And to elaborate on our non-conference schedule, we've got Wyoming East, yeah. which you said is always a top-tier school, as well as Bluefield Christmas Tournament, mm-hmm. where we start out with Oak Hill. Yeah. Uh, you know, they're AAA now. If we win that, we'll play either Bluefield or the winner of that game. If we lose, we play the loser of that game. Right. Uh, we play them and then uh, Nicholas County, who entered our region this year, Lincoln County Triple A School, right. and Sherman and the Coalfield Shootout. Yeah. But the non-conference schedule isn't much easier than our conference schedule, to say right. the least. And absolutely. Like you said, you talked about the uh, tournaments. You're going to go to Bluefield, and then you, allu- you alluded to it a little bit. Oak Hill is a rematch of the 2010-2011 state championship game. But you also will go to Belfry, Kentucky, and play in their Christmas tournament. Yep. I love the tournament atmospheres when you go, especially early in the season. It's normally really, really cold outside, but it gets really, really warm in the gym when you start, you know, getting oh, yeah. up and down the floor. So that's uh, that's good, Coach. You extend out a little bit further. Not afraid to take your guys out. You've in the past you've had success in the state of Kentucky playing not only in Belfry but in Pikeville and the uh, EQT Classic. Mm-hmm. I think you had a pretty good showing down there a couple years ago. Um, I want to highlight a couple special games while we got Coach here right now. Um, as we alluded to a little bit earlier, uh, December 14th will be Buddy League night. That is the opening night of the Coalfield Shootout. Uh, they'll be playing host to the Sherman Tide. There's something really interesting here, Coach, and what kind of, we, we've talked about this a little bit off camera, but January 4th, Chapmanville will be at home. This will be the first meeting of the year between you and the Tigers. You've, you've kind of set up a homecoming night, and, um, like I said, we were talking about it a little bit earlier. You know, your football has one. Why can't basketball have one? I think that's a great idea. But you're throwing, no pun intended, you're throwing throwback in there. It's going to be kind of like a retro type evening. Explain to the crowd a little bit what you're going to try to do there. Um, not that we ever played real great in the uniforms that we plan on wearing that night. And I'd say Chapmanville's had us a few losses in those. But we are, I found, I dug up the old jerseys from my senior year, my junior and senior year, our junior and senior right. year. Um, we were going to wear those jerseys that night. And like you said, throwback, kind of like a homecoming type deal. I'm going to extend it to any previous basketball player that's played for Scott High School um, throughout the, the history of Scott. Get in free. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, you know, to come out, support us, try to be a part of what we're doing here once again. You know, once a Skyhawk, always a Skyhawk. Right. And I want them to feel that they are, they can connect with the team now, and the team now can connect with the past players. Right. You know, I think it's very important that, that everybody that's what they've done up to this point is still shown and, and respected and acknowledged. Yeah. And um, I think by having a throwback night and wearing older jerseys that – um Everybody can feel like they're part of it again. Right. Well, you know, anybody that's like taken any type of construction in order to build a house, you have to lay a foundation, and that's kind of what you're expressing to the people here. Before you know, it's it's taken you know, a lot of wins and a lot of losses to get where you're at. Get everybody involved. I think that's a great, great deal, Coach. And I'm real interested to see what type of. Um, I'm gonna venture. I'd say maybe some of the students may throw some costumes in there for it to be homecoming <laughs> night. I, you know, these kids nowadays, it's. Uh, be pretty interesting to see what they come up with. Yeah, and the good thing about that is it is during the college break too, so any college student will be out of yeah. school at the time and they can come on support. And, awesome. and I also will extend that to uh, any player that's played for us that uh, more than welcome to come see our locker room and be with us during pregame and that's halftime. Good. That's awesome, and uh, we'll pass that message along as the season goes on. Just, you know, you can tune in to wvsportsnet.com and we'll be following the Skyhawks all year on the road and at home. Um, and, and the Chatville game will be played here at the Hawks Nest, right, Coach? Yes. Okay. All right. Moving on, the next uh, the next big evening you'll have will be January 18th. Like you said, one of the out of uh, out of conference opponents will be home against Nicholas County. Is grade school night? Um, the, kind of explain that one to the audience and see, let's see what. Uh, uh, we just extend it to any grade school player, like we do Buddy League. Right. You know, we want them to come out and see what it's all about to be a Skyhawk. You know, bring them out to a game, let them come in free, and just be a part of what we're doing. We announce each of their names, and, of course, they walk across the floor and get to do that. But the main thing is to, to watch us in action, you know, see the excitement, see see the crowd cheer, see how loud it gets, you know, the right. cheerleaders up cheering, and just our guys' emotion coming out and let them be a part of that and, you know, remit or think one day, you know, that's going to be me. I, I can remember 
doing a camp here when I was in grade school. Right. And um, Coach Carden was actually the coach, and he gave us these old jerseys from probably the 80s. Mm-hmm. And uh, I just remember taking it home and wearing it and thinking, you know, one day I'm going to be wearing one of those right. jerseys. So it's just something to give them that they can look forward to uh, whenever they do get in high school. And that, that That is awesome. That's one thing we'll always stay with uh, with young kids. You know, those events like that, like you said, you remember the basketball camp. It's probably been close to 20 years ago. That memory is probably still vivid in your mind. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'd like to see everybody come out. If, um, if we're going to have a night like that, I think it's real important that the community come out. We've been here uh, during big games. The electricity in the gym is just amazing. Come on out and support the Skyhawks. If nothing else, do it for the, uh, for the grade schoolers. Uh, you know, come out and see them. And the final big night we'll have will be the last game of the season. It'll uh, be February 19th. We'll, uh, we'll host Polka at home, and that's senior night. And that's always an emotional evening. All the seniors from the winter sports will be honored. Uh, girls basketball, boys basketball, so on. So there's, uh, there's four big nights for you to look at, you know, with the Sky, Skyhawks, um, you know, come out. Support the team not only on these nights, but like to see you at all the games. Um, talking a little bit about moving forward, Coach. And Can I elaborate on what we found the schedule? We forgot, I forgot to tell you about this off camera. Um, our sectional, we are playing everybody in our sectional this year. Um, so this, those games with Tulsa, Wayne, Chapmanville, and Mingo Central became a lot more important because we're taking the record of those games against your sectional opponents and that's how you'll automatically be seated in the sectional tournament. So those four games mean a lot more than they did last year where last year the coaches just voted on who should be in the right. number one, number two, number three, number four, and so on. Um, so those, not that any four games are more important than any other, right. but, well, four opponents, but those four opponents, those eight games will mean a lot more now than they ever have. Absolutely. So those are games to mark on your calendar, yeah. you know, that, that should, if I ever say we need your support, that would right. be the games that we need yeah. more than any. And that's a, that's a much better system, I feel like, you know, playing in rather than having the coaches vote on it. So, you know, if nothing else, when we do get those teams at home, we want, uh, you know, the majority of the sport to come out, get behind the boys, uh, let's try to make this into a magical year and let's return back to Charleston where we were two years ago. Um, you were talking a little bit earlier, Coach, about we you know, were wanting to get people out, wanting to get people excited. One thing, if you haven't been to the gym in a while, you will notice um, the gym is starting to be decorated a little bit. Uh, this was something that never happened while we were here. Um, I think it's a great thing. Talk, talk a little bit to, the, uh, to your fans, to the people maybe listening at home, what this means to have that type of support. Um, if you walk into our gym now, it's like you said, you'll see banners hung up from local businesses that have shown us wonderful support. Um, well, actually, because of their support over the past two years, we were able to purchase new jerseys this year. That's great. Um, we got new jerseys for the kids. One more thing to show our appreciation to them for working hard. Right. And um, hopefully keep them working like they have been. But the, the community... Well, the decorating started, Coach Kenry started decorating with some of our sectional wins and um, putting those banners up. And then it's now it's led to boys' basketball banners as well as girls' basketball be hung this year. But it's starting to come together and look like a high school gym right. rather than just a uh, what people like to call Cracker Jack box or yeah. something. It was all white walls, nothing on the floor. You didn't even know who, what school you were in Absolutely. if you didn't see the front door. So. I just think it's it's great what the community's done. They've helped us make it our own, their own. Yeah. It's something everybody can be a part of. It's one of them things, you know, you want to have a distinct home court advantage when you come to your place and play, and this has just added another element to it. Um, I think it looks great. There's probably, I don't know how many banners, but I know it takes up one whole side of the wall, and there is talks about filling the other side. So that's great that there's that many businesses in an economic time where it would probably not be feasible for them, you know, to, to be in that situation, but they want to get behind the kids. They understand how important it is. Um, speaking of getting, getting behind, I mean, I know that you're the head coach. You take all the good and the bad. Let's talk a little bit about your coaching staff. Um, I know that that plays a very important role in developing the kids. Um, so let, let's talk a little bit about them. Maybe we first want to name them and then just elaborate a little bit about them. Um, we have uh, returning this year uh, Coach Steve McComas, mm-hmm. Coach Marcus Lamble, and um, 
we've added two more to our staff this season, which is Coach Chester Mitchell and Coach Johnny Baldwin. Um, I'll start with Coach Steve McCama. Steve is a uh, he's a head coach that it has an assistant tag right now. I mean, right. he he's we we work together so much. He he's so knowledgeable about the game and his in-game adjustments are something that I envy. Right. You know, I, I'm not an expert at that by any means. Right. And he, his, his, we were at Point Pleasant. I'll give you a quick example. We was at Point Pleasant last year. And I think after we watched film, we uh, ran 11 different defenses. And you might say, well, I don't even know there were 11 different defenses. But just some of the things we tweaked and did throughout that game, we were down by 18 or 19 right. in the third quarter, fought back, tied it at the end of regulation, ended up winning in overtime. Yeah. So it's just, and, and he'd look at me and say, Let's do this. I have to be like, are you sure? And he, trust me. Yeah. <laughs> and I do. I, you know, I trust yeah. him with everything. So, uh, Steve is just, he's so valuable to have. And I don't know what I'd do without him. I mean, right. The program wouldn't be where it was if we didn't have him. He's, right. he's calm when he needs to be. He's not when he needs to be. Yeah. And, uh, kids respect him. Coaches respect him. He just, he's well respected. Second guy returning is, uh, Marcus Lamble. He's a younger coach. He's a little bit younger than I am. But, uh, his energy he brings to practice is is undeniable, and his willingness to work with the kids. I mean, uh, he always opens up his gym. He's got a gym up down on Main Street, Southern Fitness, that uh, it, boys are welcome to any time, and he'll right. open it for them, you know, rain or, or snow or yeah. sunshine, whatever. And he he just like a sponge. He he's taking it all in and he wants to someday be a head coach and I think he'll make a darn good one when he is. We talked about it one day um a while back, you were talking about how reliable he was and that's something that you don't find a lot in people. You know, he's uh he's probably never one of the people that's on time, he's probably always early. Oh yeah, it, you know, it's either I'm here and then he's right behind me or he's right. here and I'm right behind him. Right. And he, he is he's one of the most reliable people I've ever seen. To be that young, that's a great quality to have. Absolutely. I mean, because that's usually something that you'd have to worry about of a younger person. Uh, so reliable, Chester Mitchell is, is very reliable. He's yeah. He came out at the end of the season last year and um, he stayed with us all summer. And uh, now this year he's going to help us out as well, which we're hoping he's going to get the Madison Middle School job. Yeah. And if he does, then he'll still be part of our staff, but that'll be his main focus. Right. But uh, Chester's reliable, and he's he's kind of like Marcus. He he's had the Madison grade the past few years, right. but uh, he's learned everything he could from from our program right. to try to implement it into the middle school. Yeah. And uh, I think if we get to that point where we're starting to do our stuff with the mm-hmm. middle school. It's going to take this high school to the next level, Absolutely. and um, that's what that's what has to happen. I mean, that's what happens in Kentucky and Indiana, yeah. where that's known that's for basketball. Reminds me a lot of Wayne football. We hear about that all the time. You know, they they've learned the offenses and defenses from Pee Wee football, and they've run it all the way up. And you know, a lot of people may not realize what that means. You go down and look at their trophy case, and you see what that means. Oh gosh, yeah, and. You know, any time that they're doing the same thing in middle school or being taught the same principles, I should say, um, you know, they're obviously going to be better whenever they get right. here and more crisp. I was going to say, it's less thinking at this level as far as bringing in the knowledge and it's more reacting. You know, you, you've bred it into them and they're going to just know it. And then when they get here with you, they can expand upon, you know, a di- maybe a different phase or a different element. Well, it's like our freshman this year that we've had two freshmen that uh, did all the travel ball with us, mm-hmm. you know. They got 50 games in, 49 games in, look, trying to learn all the principles. Yeah. Now, just imagine if they already knew all the principles to right. everything we were, you know, trying to do and teach, and they got just playing time, right. experience. You know, they'd be, they'd be playing like sophomores right now instead of still yeah. freshmen. And then our last one that we had this year was Coach Johnny Baldwin. Um, Johnny was a little bit older than us in school, uh-huh. obviously known for his basketball knowledge. Right. I mean, even though we were a little bit younger, we always knew that he was a very fundamentally sound basketball player, knew the game very well. And um, On the courts, they normally call him Mr. Fundamental. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> yeah. I mean his right hand is as good as his left. Yeah. There's nothing that, about his game that you could ever knock. Yeah. Um, but he just brings a new aspect in where – we all are, are noticing something, or we're, we're harping on something, and here comes Coach Baldwin with yeah. something that, oh man, you know, we didn't right. even notice that. Yeah. And it's always something important, like, you know, how did we miss it? It and gives you that outside scope, yeah. you know, the outside view. Absolutely. Yeah, so he's going to be a huge addition. I really look forward to working with him this year. 
Yeah, he's uh, he's another good, cool, calm presence. You know that. Uh, you know, it it takes it takes all types to make it work. And uh, like I said, coach, I think that'd be a good one to add to your program. Well, we're uh, we're roughly about ten days out from tryouts. Um, tryouts will, will happen here at the high school November twelfth. Uh, for any boys or girls maybe watch this, be interested in joining the Skyhawk basketball program. Coach, greatly appreciate your time. We'll be with you all year. Um, you can catch all the Skyhawk games here on WVSportsNet.com. Um, for head coach Nick Cabell, I'm John Foster. We'll see you next time on WVSN, your sports voice of the Valley.